What's going on there, citizens of the Reject Nation? We are going to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, the season four premiere, after that incredible cliffhanger from season three. Ladies and gentlemen, please leave a like and a comment about anything you want. I don't care what it is, is because it just helps out the video regardless. Tell us about what you ate this morning. Tell us about your favorite animal that you once had. Tell us about the love of your life. Tell us about the woman or man that you missed out on that you should have married instead of the one you're with. I don't care what it is. Just put it in the comments. Also, full length reaction watch longs. We sync up with your own copy of B99 over at our Patreon page. Thank you so much for all who have shown your support and have joined us over there. You super sexy rejects. Let's get to it. <laughs> Are you ready for this one? Daddy's daughter Anne is getting That's divorced. Susan Berger. Sue. We know the woman in the middle. We should fix her up with Bernice's son. What's his name? The doctor. Oh, Vince. And he's not a doctor. He's a pharmacist. Although that might appeal to Anne. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> You're such a cracker. Forget Anne. Who should we fix him up with, huh? Oh, now, Sal, you know I'm still getting over the tragic loss of my wife. She was such a strong female woman with nice, heavy breasts. <laughs> Oh, that's my neighbor. Hey, Larry. Ah, oh, hey. Greb. Greg. Ah, that was it. Greb. Not sure why I have so much trouble remembering, probably because our relationship is so casual. <laughs> You've been a little depressed. Have I? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Don't eat the burrito. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> disgusting. <laughs> you deserve this promotion. I'll go in there and get it. Give him hell, Greg. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Carly. Tammy, looks like you're keeping the machines running smoothly. Whatever. Carly will be the first to go. <laughs> I'd like to be assistant manager. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, I just never expected you to be interested in management. I mean, you don't seem like the type of person who's really interested in leadership roles. Really? What? I'm very hardworking. Yeah, when you're not totally blazed. I assure you that's not me. Okay, tell that to the Count Bluntula t-shirt that you were rocking last week. <laughs> Hello? Go to location one now. Oh. Maya Rudolph. <laughs> Has anyone questioned your current identity, either in person or online? No. Pop quiz. Greg, where did you go to college? Ohio State, where I majored in communications. <laughs> Larry, what's your favorite movie? Uh, Die Hard. Wrong. Jake's favorite movie is Die Hard. I asked you for Larry's favorite movie. Two people can have the same favorite movie. They can, but they don't. Larry's favorite <laughs> movie is Failure to Launch. Oh, no. I'm sorry, but it looks like Larry and Greg will be in Florida indefinitely. Pop quiz, Larry. Oh, Who's the female lead in Failure to Launch? Sarah, Sarah Jessica Sarah Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker, man. God, it's like you want to die. <laughs> you were right. It's the job. It keeps me focused. Oh, well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Yep. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got to drive this biatch back to work. What? <laughs> oh, sorry. This is the Ikura Biatch 5000. <laughs> ATVs are so fun. I once flipped one over. Oh. OK, Jimmy Figgis, where the hell are you? Oh, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I am off. Honk, honk. I don't know where the horn is. <laughs> Yeah, with the ATVs? The only thing you're selling is a huge pile of bunk. How did you get here so fast? You were walking. I was power walking. <laughs> <laughs> Roll heel ball talk. After we met the marshal, you said something very strange. It was squirtingly, wasn't it? No, something much stranger. You were right. <laughs> I guess the combination on the first try. 69, 69. <laughs> Because I hate this stupid place, and I've got to get out. I mean, this town's claim to fame is that its mayors keep dying, and no one knows why. That's insane. <laughs> Snap out of it and get a job. OK. I wonder who's hiring. Hey, everyone. I just oh, want to introduce yes. you to our new assistant manager, Larry mm -hmm. Sherbert. 
No. No way. No. I believe in the power of nicknames. Smile face. Senorita swag. Kahuna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, can I get real with you for one sec? I used to work for a real stickler. Type of guy that just got off on telling me what to do. One time he invaded my private space and stole my stuff. Why would he do that? Perhaps he had a good reason. Wrong, Mr. Fart. He was a jerk and he sucked. But he was the one who motivated me to get off my ass and get this job. So in a way, we really have him to thank for all this happening. Give it up. <laughs> you have zero experience. I guess you lied on your resume. <laughs> Greg, you stony macaroni. Of course I lied on my resume. Our entire lives are a lie. I straight up said I was that guy who landed the plane on the Hudson. <laughs> Someone just volunteered to be DJ B Day. Here at the Fun Zone, we live by one rule. When it's your birthday, you are always cool. Parents and kids are all the same. Watch as I do a dance to your name. Derek. Derek. Well, then I guess it's time for your next task. You're going to need to change. Into what? Oh, Mr. Fart. No. Every time a go-kart drives by, I want you to scream, and this is very important, me so corny! <laughs> you can ruin my job, Larry, but that's not all I've got here in Florida. I've got a life. I've got friends. You sure about that? Honestly, Estelle? No, oh, no. Go to hell, Larry! That's my walking group! Off to get my file? No, you will never get the... Whoa! Whoa. Oh, jeez. We got bigger problems. This is gonna break the internet. Oh, no, no, shit. No, no, man, please, you cannot put that on the internet. No! Oh, oh shit. I was hoping that would happen. Yes. Yes. These go-kart drivers are merciless. We have to get that video. Can we please just press pause on this fight and work together? Yes, on one condition. You stay the hell away from my walking group. The walking group meant nothing to me. That's even worse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What did you find? Not much. The camera was behind her. But look at her calf. It's a tattoo of Jesus punching Bin Laden in the nuts. Nice. Yeah, that's the most common tattoo we give. So these <laughs> photos tell us nothing? Actually, you know what? That's a high school graduation ring. Damn Marino High, class of 2003. Marino Damn High, Marie. home of the Dolphins, I suspect. No, pet detectives. Town was really. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got inked or what? No, I already have a tattoo. What? Where? Why? How? When? I will never talk about it again. It's on his butt. We're not cops anymore. How are we going to get access to those files? Easy. I walk in there dressed as an exterminator, say I'm from 123 Pest Removal. Secretary's like, never heard of you. Then I'm like, listen, lassie, it's best you let me speak with your principal. I hear it. I'm going to drop the accent. She takes me to see the principal. You walk in behind me and download the file. Hey there. I'm the exterminator here for the. Uh... Yes, you're here for the snakes. All right. Oh, God. I found our suspect. Her name is Jordan Carfton, and she lives on Shula Lane. How did the snake removal go? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Carfton, you don't know uh, us, but... Yeah, I do. I got you on video looking like a couple of dumbasses. <laughs> I don't care about you. A great viral video like that could fetch me 10 grand. And do you know what type of tanning bed I could get for that kind of money? A mid-range one. Not necessary. Your tan is great as is. You look like an evenly stained dick. All right, dude, keep it in your pants. Like, I get why you're into this, and I could see something going on <laughs> with us later. What if we gave you the $10,000? Make it 15, you got a deal. Jesus. Meet us tonight at the Fun Zone, 8 o'clock. I will. Shoot her. Don't worry. I still have a few tricks up my sleeve. The only thing I need you to do is... I'm not going to show you my tattoo. Come on, just give me a hint. Is it an antique boat? Is it a musket? Is it me on a dragon? <laughs> $15,000 cash. You just stuck a few 20s around a bunch of corn dog coupons. Here's the phone. You can delete the video. What the hell? This isn't real money. Hey, give me my phone. You're going to have to catch me first. Oh, oh God. You really thought that would work? This video is going viral. <laughs> I'm going to demand they send us to different cities because I don't want you anywhere near me. I swapped the phones. Sorry. <laughs> Bye, Greg. Hey. He hey, didn't bro. know you swapped the phone. <laughs> Lastly, hole 13 on the mini golf course is missing. So tell all the players to just... He became assistant manager. 
promotion. Hey, I'm Craig. You are killing it as assistant manager. I mean, having the idea to have people come in at 9 a.m., that has really helped business. Yes, that is when the sign says we're open. <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to this particular associate and apologize for saying he half-assed his ATV sales technique. Well, that's very nice, but I've moved on, and I'm with customers, so thanks. These machines are death traps. If you purchase one, you will be main. <laughs> <laughs> I've looked over what you've got, given your resources, very impressive, but- I know. It'll take me months to find Figus, but we'll find him faster if we work together. What if we don't find Figus? What if Figus finds us? Ah. Oh. We post this video and use it to lure Figus down here, making ourselves into bait. And once Figus is here, we take him down, climb out of America's steaming orifice, and go home. I like the way you're thinking, Greg. It's Holt. Captain Raymond Holt. Oh, shit. Yeah. Now come and get us, Figus. Not a doctor. Ooh. Holt Knight rises. It's going down. It's going down. Dude, Amy, Rosa, Terry were hilarious. Dude, I love you, Charles. Oh, my God. Some of those gags with Charles. So good. Just the B stories amongst them all. Yeah. Really kind of overshadowed the A story with Holt. It was really crazy how Scully and Hitchcock, like, took the lead this time. I know, and they actually got to prove themselves as something fearless. It was moving. Like, I cried a little bit for the both of them. I have never been brought to such tears mm -hmm. on a Brooklyn Nine-Nine episode until now. No, and I can't imagine ever being moved such as, such, like, in, in this way again, you know? He talks sincerely for one minute. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make a mockery of this very emotional episode featuring the entire cast of the show. Are you going to talk sincerely about this episode, John? We have very limited time. Yes, I enjoyed it quite <laughs> a bit. It's very nice to be back with uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Your time's I, up, John. I missed it in our bye week. too slow. Uh, just channeling my speed whole it, <laughs> Speed it up. Uh, it good. Speed up the talking. And it was funny. And uh, it was good to see Yorma. And, uh, you know. <laughs> just talk faster. Uh, uh, Come on. Gotta get, I got to channel my inner coy. Okay. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh, really funny jokes. Uh, some really great, uh, you know, like banter-based comedy. Some good sight gags with the ATV. Really liked the walking group. Um, and uh, Yorma Tacone from the Lonely Island. Always funny to see him and Andy Samberg, you know, bouncing off each other. Him and... Uh, and Andre Brower bouncing off each other was really funny as well and loved the, uh, you know, just reorientation of the story. Them trying to make it work in Florida, but then not making it work in Florida and deciding to go after Figgis instead. Plus, we got Maya Rudolph cameo. Amazing. What do you think? I think the exploration of an identity crisis is something really profound and perhaps deeper rooted, perhaps something of a reflection of what the, the writing staff is going through, oftentimes as artists in this field. We feel like, and I say we because I'm encompassing John and I, as um, that, that symptom, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like sometimes you're walking through life feeling like you've got to be something you're not. And oftentimes you end up settling for less and having to compromise and also living in a life of fear. So I thought this episode was actually quite powerful in how it portrayed something that I think a lot of people can really identify with because in a lot of ways, most of us are living in our own witness protection program where we are hiding behind a veil of, oh my God, yeah, this is the job that I have. This is what's most important to me. This is the career. This is the money. This is about keeping it safe. But there's no such thing as security in this world. That is a lie told to you by the corporates. Yeah, by the security companies who want your money. It is not secure. So go out there and take chances and put yourself out on the internet. I think I got a lot from this episode, and I feel like it's going to change my my life and the journey that I go down now mm -hmm. after this. This is profound. And neither of us will ever be the same again. No. You know? I'm getting highlights. It's the first day of the rest of our lives, you know? I would love to work at, like, a mini golf course or an arcade, though, because I, I, I love going to, like, Chuck E. Cheese or Sherman Oaks Castle Park. Same. I'm not a big fan of Dave and Buster's. I feel like that is uh, kind of a mockery of <laughs> what the the essence and the joy and nostalgia element is. It's it's like I feel like people kind of go there to to be adults and hook up, and I don't like it. I I feel like no, you should go for the games. And I think uh, there's a big part of Dave and Buster's that doesn't feel like they're there for the actual games. 
feel like they're there for the beer more than they are for the games. It's I've been really there with groups of people like that where they just sit around the table drinking beer for like two hours, barely touching the games. And that's a real turnoff to me. To me, it's more like this, you know, being a grown ass man walking in and there's a bunch of little kids and I look like I don't belong. That is the joy right there. That's actually a really serious, sincere thought that I, that's true I don't have when I go there and I, I want to play basketball. I'm like this freaking 10 year old Latino kid it's taking forever. <laughs> it's just, it's just like, come on, quit hogging the basketball game. Yeah. I want to play the basketball game. It's more my eye line where the basket is. And then if you shove that kid, you look like the asshole. Yeah. yeah. And then these groups of like 18 people all like, let's, let's play Mario Kart racing again. Yeah. Like, and geez, like, share it. Share it. You freaking weird high school prep white boys. Stop it. There are only three terminals. You're going to be here all night. Let some of us play. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, you know, you're playing mini golf and you got those high schoolers who are just like, oh, I'm going to be like the wacky guy to make the girls <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Stupid jackasses. You got to take the game seriously. Oh, I hit my ball into the water. How, uh, embarrassing. I'm going to walk in the water. Oh. Uh, how about I take a golf club to your head? You dumb 15 year old kid. <laughs> yeah, I beat you to death right here on this course. <laughs> on this Astro turf, your blood will be spilled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's not fair, but, you know, these are the struggles that we have to endure. We have to endure people. Growing up's hard, man. Yeah. Growing you know, hard. Mm -hmm. Kids just think they can do whatever they want in places that are kid appropriate when really, you know, they, they should learn to get out of the way for us adult folk. You know, we want to play Time Crisis right now or ski ball or miniature golf. And some of us take the scoring very seriously. Some of us are trying to improve our game, our putt game. Are, are getting the ball between the things on the windmill game without getting, you know, hit. And sometimes I want to get a good doll prize, too. And that requires a lot of tickets. Yeah. So, you know, and oftentimes, yeah, do I end up spending more money to try to win the tickets than I would for me to just buy the actual item that I'm trying to win? Of Duh. course. Usually four times the amount of money. Mm -hmm. But it's about earning that. That's right converting tickets into a prize mm -hmm. that is the reward system that every american should be aiming for in order to succeed in life so with that in mind i did think that this was a delightful episode mm -hmm. and uh, i thought it was funny and i'm excited for them to get back into the, the routine of actually copping it out I imagine next episode we'll go back to actual B99, see what the life is like. Uh, but yeah, this was a fun episode. Fun episode overall. That's right. We should go into witness protection. Didn't find it hilarious. There were some hilarious moments. It's okay. It's never hilarious adjusting to a new life. No, it's not. And learning profound lessons about yourself. When I lived in Puerto Rico for a year, mm -hmm. It was really tough when I realized that Logan Paul is my next door neighbor. Wow. And I was like, why do you build a house that is only slightly a few inches taller than mine? Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was to make a point. It was to slight you specifically. And, uh, but, you know, saving money on taxes is nice. Mm -hmm. you, know, you get a real good tax break. And I feel like the people of Puerto Rico are really happy I was there. Yes. And they appreciate also that you. Logan Paul's Taking there, that Bunny. The I feel like a, I think they're all very, very <laughs> happy that we were all there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're gonna be on the new Bad Bunny album. Brought right? jobs. Yeah, you're gonna be featured. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we help out the economy mm -hmm. and the lower and working class people of Puerto Rico. Yeah. Definitely. So I I I kind of want to move back. I mean, I still got the property, multiple properties. Uh, don't even let people rent them out. Make sure everyone, any, like, yeah, nobody trespasses. Yeah. They, they are only for your use if you should decide you ever want to use them. I had again. to tear down a whole neighborhood mm -hmm. and whatever. Some people got to live on the streets or find some shelter. It was not my problem. <laughs> That's their problem. They should have bought needed property. They should have bought more houses when they had the chance. I know. Yeah. Quit being lazy, people yeah. in Puerto Rico, whatever you're called. Just make that house Puerto money. Rico people. Puerto Rico ho. So, yeah, I built a. Quite a full, full strip, and uh, it's glorious. Yeah, it's and once a block. year, I take vacations over there. Just admire the quiet isolation of the island. Every once in a while, I hear some other people like you got miles away, just like crowds and noise. And I'm just like, 
just like shut up. I throw money at them. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's really kind of you. I yeah. Well, it's it's um, about a hundred dollars mm. all in singles. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you make them fight over those singles. Yeah. For your amusement. Yeah. And they don't really fight because they they don't really they're, they're corn and then they don't see the value in fighting over one dollars. <sighs> However, uh, that's all I'm willing to give. <laughs> They should see the value in fighting over. I need to pay for my property. Dollar, all <laughs> yeah. right? I, I mean, pay. that's I that's need. the American dream. I need to pay for my, my house. It's just like goring somebody over a over a Washington. But you let me know, people of Puerto Rico, what I can do to contribute to the community. Mm. But I will not leave uh, my, uh, my my home state. Won't leave. Won't throw more money. Real Rejects business is registered there mm. too. Yeah. Good tax breaks. Yeah. Got an offshore so, offshore accounts. Greg stuff. Alba LLC also mm. registered there too. Greg Corp. Greg Corp. Yeah, it's great savings. Let's do a Patreon. <laughs> Maria Hammond. Maria, we want to shout you out because I was thinking if I had to go into the witness protection program, who would I want to be my neighbor? It would definitely be you. Absolutely. Because you are the most generous. Out of anyone on our Patreon. If we need something, anything, I know you are one knock away. Hell, I might even just need to stand on my front lawn and be like, Maria! Maria! Get out here! I'm out of pineapples! Can you give me a pineapple, Maria? Can you bring me some iced tea? I know you would do it, Maria. So that's why I would love for you to, in case you missed what we were talking about a little bit ago, I would love for you to live next to me in Puerto Rico. Yeah, come on down. So if you and I can just staycation together in Puerto Rico, oh, man, imagine the fun we would have. We'd be up all night together watching Rick and Morty, playing it on multiple televisions, taking up the electricity of the entire, entire I, I don't know what it is, a, a, a nation, a, a capital, a, a, a country. A country? Country? Really? Puerto Rico is a country? You know, it's, what is a, this, it's an a, avenue. A, no, it's no one of I can our build properties, all my houses. man. It's <laughs> crazy. It's it American country. property. Insanity. Insanity. America is a country. Everything else is a small town. So, yeah. <laughs> Everything else is America adjacent. They're, they're just wannabe American. Anyway, look, that's off awesome subject here. Maria, you would be the perfect neighbor because also, you know, if I'm having like a really hard night and I'm feeling emotional, I know I could just wake you up. Literally, you probably just let me walk in your door and be like, hey, Maria, Maria, Maria. Maria! Maria, wake up! I'm having a rough night! Wake up! Drop, wake some, up. drop some water on your face, and I know you would respond positively because your love for us is unconditional. Get an air horn. It's really hard. That's how we would find, wake you up. <laughs> really hard to find someone who would be as loyal and compassionate of a neighbor as you. Surely. It would actually be fun to live with you. We get to have an animal farm. Oh, cool. Buy some snakes, feed some rabbits to them. Mm -hmm. I blame you for the guilt I feel over killing the rabbits. And you would take that guilt on because you are that good of a dang, of a human being. You got soul. And you're super bad. Super bad. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying she's super bad. Anyway, Maria, on a very sincere note, um, I hope that you can have a positive holiday season. Yeah. And that this Halloween, you could dress up like the fish from The Shape of Water. Your favorite costume only costs like $200 if in Puerto Rico. Mm. Uh, oh, but, in silicone, yeah. But in, uh, in America, it's... Well, it's let's just more say expensive. only people like John could afford it. Uh, that's right. And you can't borrow my Shape of Water costume, all right? No. It's fitted to my specific body type. Not many people get the Richard Jenkins costume, but I was pretty impressed with how I you pulled it off. I love Richard Jenkins. Don't I, underestimate I, I my love I thought you were going to get the Jenkins. fish outfit, but you just no. you got the suit, the glasses, the bald cap. That's right, man. And I was like, he's doing it, man. He mm -hmm. looks like Richard Jenkins. That's right, man. Call me the Jenks. In fact, if you just, like, hide your hair. Yeah. Just, like, Richie, look at that. Richard Richie Jenkins, Jenkins over right here. here. Yeah. Richard Jenkins. Whoa. Ooh, hey, look at me. Do you guys know Richard Jenkins? Did I just become a, a, a much better actor all of a sudden? A hilarious Republican activist. That's right. You guys have no idea he the loves, joy he is. He loves 
republicanism. He does. <laughs> he does. does. Have you seen his speech at the White House Correspondence Dinner? That's <laughs> right, man. <laughs> oh, he's the funniest Richard guy Jenkins in the room. That just guy roasting Biden nonstop. It's man. Hilarious. Calling hilarious for Trump stuff. 2028. Anyway, Maria, I hope you can host the next White House Correspondence Dinner. Thank you guys for being here, and uh, thank you, Maria, for being the best of them all. Every one of them. You're better than them all. If any other patrons are watching, a shout out. You need to strive to be more like Maria. You're the best around. You mean Hamount? Hamount. <laughs> Trying to say Hammond. Hammond. You're the best Hammond. No one's gonna ever break you down. <laughs> or something else that rhymes. You made the shout weird. We're done. You made it 